Thank you, Stephanie. That was an amazing recipe, so we don't have to wait till Taco Tuesday to enjoy that. I'm sure that you and your family will get a lot of mileage out of that. Now today, I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this. I have a friend here, and not only is she a friend of mine, mostly she's a friend of God. Uh, her name is Sandy McGuire, and she has an inner healing ministry. She's an intercessor. She's a Bible teacher. She's an itinerant uh, minister, and she has a huge uh, calling with God and government, and she has a powerful story. And so I want you to hear how her life came to be. She's also a, a counselor and not just a counselor, but a, a counselor to counselors, helping those that are in the front line and um, that need to be refreshed themselves. And she helps people that are stuck become unstuck. She brings liberty, she brings freedom. Her ministry is called Here Comes Joy, and it is a joy to have you here today, Sandy. Um, I remember reading something a couple months ago on Elijah List and Elijah Streams, and I'm like, ah, oh, I know her. I know it was it was wonderful so thank you for driving and thank you for being here with us today oh you're very welcome Jen it's quite the honor <laughs> so let's jump right in to your story you have such a powerful story uh, the enemy did not want you to realize your destiny he did not want you to be positioned he did not want you on uh, the Jesus radar and he gave it his best shot but he didn't win so talk to us about uh, what happened about 15 years ago in your life. Certainly, thank you, Jen. Well, I became a believer in 2007, 2008, gave my life to the Lord, dove in head first, just began uh, in ministry very quickly and the Lord gave all these incredible words over my life of how great things were going to be and just that he had ministry for me. And he just, he was so uplifting and just, you know, everything felt, in, you know, from what I heard from the word of God and from what I heard from just uh, the Lord himself, everything was going to be so great in ministry. And the very next thing I know, everything was adverse to what the Lord had said. And in 2011, I had, I had been married for five years and got a divorce. In 2011, my ex-husband decided to that he didn't want to live anymore. He fell into a great depression and he took his life. So it was suicide by gun, very tragic. And that, that uh, was so difficult because I felt that had we not divorced, I felt that was my fault. I took on a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, and I felt that his death was my fault. That was January of 2011, it was unbelievable. So I continue on in that same year, 2011, and I had two younger siblings. There were seven total in my family, seven siblings. There were two younger siblings who I helped our parents raise. They were born when I was a teenager in high school. They were the delight of my life, Aaron and Priscilla. And in December of 2011, Aaron, who's about 22 years old, had a breakup with his girlfriend. He became depressed. We didn't fully understand what was going on. I wasn't living at home with our parents at that point, but Aaron was. So Aaron comes home, goes to his room, shuts the door. He takes out a shotgun and takes his life. Oh, gosh. It was devastating. So now 2011, the year is just ending and I've suffered two of these horrendous deaths. My family, my ex-husband's family. It was just unbelievable. And uh, to make matters worse, my youngest sister Priscilla, who was 24 at the time, she was in the military, in the Air Force, studying to be a nurse, and she was in the middle of a divorce. She was proceeding with her divorce three months after Aaron passed away in such a tragic death. Priscilla's husband decides that he was not going to let her mm. divorce him. And so he takes Priscilla's life, he gets a gun, takes her life, and then his own. Priscilla was, Aaron and Priscilla were like children to me. And it was the most devastating year that I could ever imagine. I did not only myself, but for my family. We did not understand what was happening. Everything just 
was so dark, it makes you understand the book of Job a little bit more. Yeah. You totally understand devastation. Uh, I went through a period in 2012 where I wasn't sure if I wanted to live. Some of you know our other siblings felt the same way. Of course, when that happens, so much death, so much destruction, you wonder, what do I want to live? This is so heavy, it's so weighty. The, the lives of these two precious siblings who I love so very much. And that began a time of uh, reflection, a time of depression, a time of you know wondering, am I even going to live or get through this? If so, I don't know how. And so it was the most devastating time that a person could imagine. And if it weren't for the Lord, if it weren't for those words that he had given, I knew that he had promised great things. It wasn't me who got myself through, I can tell you that, Jen. Mm -hmm. It was the grace of God, the grace of God. One day I was sitting in my bedroom after work, just laying in bed depressed like I did many days, had a gun out, and I, w I had a nine millimeter and knew how to take it apart and put it back together, take it apart and put it back together. And I just contemplate, do I want to die today? And that day, the Lord showed me a vision. I sat there holding the gun and he showed a vision of my own mom at my funeral. Oh. If I were to do that and take my life, I saw the anguish in her face and could not go through with it. That broke the depression off. It broke me out of that place and I knew that was not the direction that I was going to take. Yeah. And so it was at that point that my life began to turn. Yeah. Wow. I know your story, but it, 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 to hear it just again, I yeah. just the loss and the grief and the, the tragedy and the violence and, and then the temptation, you know, the oppression and then the, the, yeah. then the temptation that you had to fight off. You know, I know that probably, you know, with uh, our viewers, there's probably, I would say no one is watching this program that hasn't been affected by suicide or by a, a tragic loss. And I'm sure the question is, how, how do I pick up the pieces? Like, yes, I, I hear you saying God did it and thank God he gave you that vision. I mean, that's what it took for you. It was personal and, you know, he pulled on those, those heartstrings with your mom and that is a good vision. And if you were selfish, it probably wouldn't have impacted you, but you weren't. And just that, just that he gave you the vision of your mom that she couldn't take a third child, um, losing a third child, that's, that's amazing. But I love that it was personal, God, that was what you needed to, to trust him. So let's go to how the turn happened because from the ashes of that year yeah. to what you do now <laughs> and how yeah. you bring hope and healing. And I'm sure if Jesus told you in 2012 that you would do this, you probably would have said, no way. And yet look, so let's, let's talk about how the victory started to come in your life. That's a really good point, Jen. Had the Lord told me what I would be doing today, I would have run the other way. Yeah. You are most, most definitely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, when the Lord gives us a word, we cannot fathom in our own you know, line of sight. It's, not, it's really just not in our frame of reference. And I certainly didn't have that at the time. But he was giving, he was giving some words that indicated that I would be successful in ministry and many people would get free. So at that point, 2013 comes around and the Lord, it just so happened he had me in an incredible church. Uh, about once a month, I would get a prophetic word from my pastor who, by the way, at the time, didn't really know what was going on in my family. Wow. Yeah, I'd get a prophetic word and the Lord would say through her to stay under the anointing, stay under a covering and she would give words from the book of Esther and say, God has brought you into the earth for such a time as yes. this, you will make it. God has put it pouring myrrh over your wounds and you're going to get through this. Wow. That gave me the confidence to continue. That gave me the confidence to carry on. And all, it was really just the word of the Lord, just like the book of Joseph, 
the word of the Lord got me through. And some days did not look successful. Some days I hid under the covers yeah. and didn't want to come out. <laughs> but but kind of like Moses, slowly I stumbled forward. It wasn't run, running, I didn't even begin to walk, but stumbled forward. Yeah. God had grace. He knew what our family had been through. So in the ministry I was in, uh, there was a teaching on how to break a death curse because there was a death curse over my family. That wasn't, those two, uh, Aaron and Priscilla, were not the only siblings I'd lost. Actually, my older brother in 2003, he passed away as well. Yes, he had an altercation with a highway patrol officer and he ended up losing his life. He made a very bad decision to turn a gun on an officer and he ended up losing his own life. So that was now my mom's third child. There was a, there was a, uh, somehow the enemy had gotten permission to come into my bloodline and take out our, my siblings. And so through the teaching of my pastor on how to break the spirit of death, how to break a dot, a decree, from the book of Daniel and the book of Esther, she yeah. taught us to pray and fast. Because in the book of Daniel, even the king couldn't break the decree. In the book of Esther, even the king, right? Esther had to pray and fast. That's it wasn't right. up to the most powerful man in the country. Yeah. And so, you know, this is, this has a lot, we as believers, I guess, do not realize how much power we have being in covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Praying and fasting worked. It broke that decree. I didn't do it alone. My cousin uh, prayed and fasted with me. My aunt Nadine, uh, Pastor Paul Bradshaw, just incredible women and men of God band together. Uh, we met, I talked to them about what was happening, what I believed was happening. And within three weeks, maybe a few more weeks, the Lord sent a prophet whom I'd never met. He was actually from Tampa, Florida. Oh, he was wow. from Church Without Walls, <laughs> Dean Clark. In fact, a gentleman here knows him. He showed up at the church I was at. I'd never met him. He pulls me out of the, the, the audience and he says, you, the Lord has a word for you. He gives the word of the Lord that that day God broke the spirit of death. He says, God is sending an anointing this very day to break the spirit of death off of your family. Wow. And that just, I lost it. Oh, you can imagine, I want to just cry now, but I lost it because I knew God intervened. Yeah. God sent yeah. an anointing and he intervened. I didn't do anything special. We just got together, prayed and fasted like Daniel and like Esther, and that broke the death off of our family. You obeyed the word. Oh. <laughs> wow, you obeyed yeah. the word. Glory. You know, um, I love what you said about community is that there are some things we can pray about and, and the Trinity partners with us. And then there's other things, you know, that one will put a thousand, two will put 10,000, yes. three will put a hundred thousand, four will put a million. And so when, you know, a three chord strand is not easily broken and you got together uh, in community and and you did just the simple disciplines in the word, the basics, and God moved. And who knows where your family would be? Yeah. You, you've created a legacy. And, and I think it's so important, especially for those watching, because it is very real that there are generational curses, bloodline curses, uh, where the enemy tries to come against families yes. and bloodlines, especially those that are anointed and called. And I know that as you're talking, I, I keep hearing similarities and parallels uh, to your life and Joseph's life in the Bible, how he got a promise and then he went through valley after valley and disappointment after disappointment before that waiting period was over. Um, so how, how, how have you felt like when you've been in these waiting stages and like you said, you got the word and then it just seem, seems like there was nothing but opposition. Yeah, that's a very good question. Jen, you could not have found a better um, person in the Bible that matched my story. So yes, Joseph, uh, the Lord gave him that word in Genesis 37, you know, you're gonna be great. Your family's gonna, you know, bow down to you and all this stuff. And of course he was immature enough to tell everyone. Yeah. So, you know, the, in Psalm 105, the Bible says that until Joseph's time came, until the time where his word was fulfilled, it says the word of the Lord tried him. Mm. The word of the Lord tried him. And in Genesis 37, when Joseph is introduced, there's a word that, that in uh, Genesis, it says the lad, it describes Joseph. Well, that word in Hebrew actually indicates immaturity. Yeah. And so this is why Joseph didn't know any better. He spoke an evil report about his brothers, things like that. So, 
you know, I, I didn't know this initially. We learn by experience, right? The Bible says that even Jesus, he learned obedience through suffering. Yes. And so, you know, the Lord often gives us an incredible word and we have to go through a journey to match the word. Yeah. And so the Lord says, you're gonna come up here to this incredible place, but at the time you're here. Yeah. And he's got, he needs to refine our character yeah. because there are character traits that God uses and there are character traits that God refuses. Yeah. And so Joseph, if we look at his journey, suffering after suffering after suffering, he did not deserve that suffering. However, the Lord knew that it was going to be worth it, but the word of the Lord had to try him. Yeah. You know, if the Lord gave us a word and said, you're gonna be great, you're gonna be amazing, and just placed us in that amazing position, well, actually he did it to Saul. Uh, he did it to Saul. And his flesh couldn't handle it. Th that's right. He wasn't, his character was not perfected. That's right. And so Esther went through the death walk. Joseph went through the death walk. The incredible thing about Joseph is that at the end, he didn't even care that his brothers <laughs> had done that to him and threw him in the pit. In fact, Joseph consoled his brothers and says, don't worry about that. God used yeah. this for the good. And that really is what, what ended up happening in my life. The Lord... Uh, perfect, worked on, let's just say worked on, because I'm still on the journey, yes. worked on my character yeah. and brought me into a place of ministry in 2016 and 17. Um, I feel like Moses who, who stumbled forward a lot, but I, th I think it's the grace of God really that has yeah. been on my life to just get back up every day. Yeah. That doesn't mean we have to, we will feel like champions. We will not feel like champions every day, yeah. right? Get back up, grab a hold of that word and trust in God, yeah. right? It's up to him to fulfill that word. All we have to do is cooperate with the process. Yeah. And so the, the ministry that God gave me, Here Comes Joy, it's completely opposite of what my life looked like, yeah. like during those dark days. Yeah. So he gave me this ministry that helps people get free. And as a result of that, there's much joy yeah. Uh, yeah, as a manifestation. I love that. I, w I wanna hear you talk forever, but we only have a couple minutes left and I want you to be able to just minister to someone who's waiting, hurting, broken, needs hope, needs yes. joy. Let's just close today's program with you ministering. Most definitely, thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up our brothers and sisters who are watching. Lord, we thank you that your word says the anointing of God destroys every yoke. You know those who are feeling depressed. You know there are some out there, they have received a word of the Lord and have grown discouraged. So we lift them up right now and we ask you, Lord, to touch, to move. We thank you, God, that even just this testimony today has quickened, has stirred hearts that are out there. So we thank you for every single one of our brothers and sisters. Lord, we just call on the community that they need, the fellowship that they need and encouragement. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your presence to touch them right now. In your presence is fullness of joy. So Lord, we break off every yoke that has oppressed yes. our brothers and sisters that are out there. And we thank you, Lord, that they will fulfill the call of God on their life. I declare over you, this is not the end. It's not over. You will fulfill the call of God on your life in the mighty name of Jesus. He's a good God. He's faithful. Oh, and your word is being true tried. Bless you. We love you.